Good evening. Coming up in tonight's news at 7.30, the fire services department sets up three special investigating teams to probe last night's fire at Tune 1. In overseas news at 7.30, U.S. Secretary of State George Shultz briefs NATO allies about Russian proposals on nuclear arms. Argentina is tonight on the brink of a possible military coup. Trains are again the target of fire bombers in Soweto. And the gruelling 4,000-kilometre motor rally gets underway in Kenya. Details of those stories and more in the news at 7.30. See you then. This is TVB Pearl. Well, it was in around, around 1970. That would be about four years after the thing got rolling. My wife survived the attacks of the Cultural Revolution. Sidney Shapiro, a profile, tonight on Focus. The Chinese Civil War between the Communist and Nationalist armies. But even with this conflict, Westerners still came to China. Like one Jewish American from Brooklyn, New York, eventually becoming a Chinese citizen. Sidney Shapiro, interviewed in Hong Kong. I arrived on April 1st, 1947, April Fool's Day, which I hope has no significance. Uh, after a 30-day voyage on a freighter from New York, I knew next to nothing about China. I had had a little Chinese language training in the Army. I had been a lawyer before the war, and I decided I didn't want to be a lawyer anymore. I wasn't interested in what I considered the sordid commercial world of New York. And I had acquired this uh, very elementary knowledge of, of the Chinese language and a, a smattering of ignorance about Chinese affairs. So it seemed to be that it might be a good idea to come out and see what there was to see. My main objective was not particularly to go into business or to become a lawyer, but to use the opportunity to further my studies in the Chinese language and in Chinese culture. I found Shanghai in 1947 a shocking place. Uh, I had never seen such poverty and degradation in America. I had heard about the, the fact that, the, that, that China was backward and that people were poor and they, they were pushed around. But it's one thing to hear about it or read about it and to see it with your own eyes. And, and uh, it was very striking in 47. countryside was impoverished by the fighting that had been going on for so many years, by the dumping of Japanese goods, manufactured goods, which uh, bankrupted the silk farmers, the filature manufacturer people. And so uh, there were literally hundreds of thousands of farmer, peasant refugees who streamed into Shanghai uh, hoping against hope to find something, there wasn't anything for them because uh, the whole economic situation was deteriorating in Shanghai. Galloping inflation, no business to speak of, uh, merchandise in warehouses but not moving. The uh, business community, the, whether they were Chinese or foreign, spent most of their time buying and selling warehouse receipts and bills of lading. That move, but the merchandise itself just sat. The man in the street, the average Chinese, 
the shopkeeper, the small businessman it were, were, were going bankrupt left and right. If you had, if you were fortunate enough to have a job, and when you got your pay, it was in huge stacks of paper, a currency, which if you had any sense, you put into a big gunny sack and rushed down to the nearest rice shop and bought enough rice for your family for the coming week or month before the price went up again. And prices would go up dramatically uh, in big leaps 